Hi, I'm Paul, and today we are going to talk about something called I squared S. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Let's, let's get to it and see here what we have. Our question comes from Chris in Tucson, Arizona. I always read that as Tucson, but I know it's Tucson. I'm not supposed to pronounce the C. Um, would you explain what I2S is, which is I squared S, a little, little two, superscript? And do you expect I squared S to remain the best digital interface, especially as you uh, finalize your server? Thanks. The quick answer is yes, abs absolutely. So l let me explain what, what all this means. And we got to go back to kind of the beginning. When CD players first came out, 19, 1982, 83, we were right there on the forefront of it, and we were learning about it. And when we would look at the back of an original Sony or Philips CD player, you would see a little RCA connector said, digital out, single connector, okay? And as we looked at that and started reading up on it and understanding what it was, that digital output had all the information that was being fed to the internal D to A converter to finally make analog music that comes out of your CD player. And that digital audio data came out in a format that would call, it was called SPDIF, SPDIF, some people call it. And that stands for the Sony Philips Digital Interface. Now, originally, that had more than just the digital audio. It also had cover art and pictures, and they had intended to use that to hook it up to your television through a specialized box. And then as you were listening to music on this new Miracle CD player, you would see the cover art, and you could flip through and, and see the back of the album and all. And that didn't that didn't last too long. Not many people took advantage of it, but that's essentially why they put it out there. And companies like PS Audio and Theta and Arcam, we all went to town and started building external DACs that could actually read that data and turn it into something better than the DAC inside of the CD player. So now let's look a little differently. So what is this SPDIF? This SPDIF signal. Well, the SPDIF signal is actually an amalgam of five different things. If I remember, is it five? I believe it's five, uh, which are these separate clocks and the data stream. Okay, so inside of a CD player, there is a format that is used to communicate between the transport and the DAC. So we, kn we know CD players are two elements. A transport spins the disc, has a laser beam and it reads the digital data off of the CD or DVD and then that is connected to an internal DAC and at the output of our CD player we've got analog, right? Well in between those two the format that is used is called I squared S and I squared S uses separate clocks. There's a bit clock, a word clock, a master clock and then the data. Is that four? And then ground, yeah. So anyway <laughs> There's multiple clocks and the data, but they're all separate, right? And it's important because the DAC needs to know uh, the, what the master clock's doing, what the word clock tell it, word, word, every 16 bits, you got a word, and then the bit clock, which is going through with all the individual bits, and then the master clock, which keeps everything going. So all those are separate, and then, of course, the digital data itself is separate. Now, it won't operate without this I squared S data. But Sony didn't want to put out a, a, a four tiered or a five tiered connector because that, who, who has those, right? I mean, that's, that's not something that was around then. It still isn't around much today uh, in, in the form that we might think, but, but there actually is, and I'll tell you about it. Um, so what they did is they combined, they multiplexed all of those signals together, all those clocks, and the, and the digital data, they mushed it all together and this new format called Sony Philips Digital Interface and then spit it out over a single RCA connector. Now, 
when your DAC takes that SPDIF signal, or you, you've probably also heard of AES EBU, which is the XLR version, it's the same thing. It's just a balanced version of it with different voltage levels, but it, it's exactly the same SPDIF code. So let's just use SPDIF for that. You have to then put it into a special chip that takes it all apart again and puts it back into the format that a DAC can actually use. So years ago, um, Audio Alchemy, I, and I think it was Doug Goldberg and Peter Madnick, they, they kind of introduced us to the idea of, well, why do we need SPDIF? Let's, let's just use the original i squared s data and not mux it down and, and expand it back up. Because when you do that, you cause all kinds of problems. You'll never get it back as perfect as it was. You can try, but you won't. So what you want is to maintain that, that data. Now at the time, I think they used a telephone connector or a RJ45 uh, connector, if I remember right, like a Cat5 cable maybe. And, and that had multiple conductors in it. When we first started adding I2S back in the perfect wave days, uh, I had this thought. I thought, well, I want to, when we start making our deck, I want to do I2S as well. And I started scratching my head. Well, what could we use as a as a uh, connector, a, a cable? What what out there has all these conductors in a perfect shielded cable? Got to be something because I don't want to have to make a special cable because that that's not great for a commercial success. And then it dawned on me, boink, light bulb, an HDMI cable, an HDMI cable, which is a high definition. Uh, 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 musical interface is that what it is no media I think it's a media interface anyway I, I can't remember exactly what HDMI stands for but it has more conductors than we need and it's extremely well shielded and it carries high frequency signals beautifully so we used HDMI not in its format uh, of the high definition uh, interface but we used the conductors inside and the cable that connected everything and it works great so I probably will never uh, get away from wanting our company to have I squared S whether we continue using HDMI I don't know but I, I suspect so and we've made that format the PS audio format that sends I squared S data uh, and I2C, which is a communication format, over HDMI. We've made that publicly available. A number of companies have adopted it, and it's a great format, and we shall continue using it because it sounds the best. Hope that helps you understand what's going on. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate the, the question. Bye-bye.